Asian region was recently brought to a standstill when North Korea attempted to launch a rocket into space, prompting swift condemnation from the entire international community. To learn more about why this happened, In Focus recently spoke to one of Cal's very own Asian affairs experts, Professor Darren Zook. Oh, Professor, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Um, as you know, last week, North Korea launched a rocket into space uh, despite international object objections. So the question is, why do you think they did that? Well, there's many reasons. North Korea is always uh, complicated, if nothing else. We look at domestic reasons first. The Kim Jong-il was reported to have had a stroke last August. Part of the reason you have this missile test may have been to show the world that just because Kim Jong-il was ill, uh, that in fact North Korea is still strong and he is still firmly in power. This week also happens to be the opening of the, the National People's Congress, which is kind of the North Korea's parliament, and it may also have been a really nice nationalistic unifying thing right before you have this meeting of all these people that represent North Korea to give them something to cheer about. In terms of the international audience, there are a number of things that, number of messages that Kim Jong-il is trying to send with this launch. The first is to Obama, and in many ways this is, this is a message that says you need to take us seriously and we are going to negotiate with you. If we negotiate, we're going to negotiate from a position of strength and from, as a position, as someone who considers ourselves to be our equal to you, not as someone who's going to take orders from you. Now, the North Koreans did all this um, in the face of really strong international opposition, and yet they did it anyway. How could they have done this in the face of such strong, stiff international opposition? I mean, North Korea has a long record of doing this, and, and much of it comes from the central ideology of the North Korean state, which is an ideology called Juche, which is often translated as self-reliance. And I mean, North Korea always has the belief that international opposition is not the matter, that North Korea really has to do what it has to do to survive, and it has to do so on its own time frame and in its own way. More opposition to North Korea in many ways simply gives it more leverage and more publicity. Right. So the more people get worked up about, I can't believe that North Korea is going to do this, the more North Korea knows that people are watching. But do you think more inclusion of North Korea, more, I guess, acceptance of it in the future, would that help? Uh, ensure peace and stability in that region? It's, I mean, it, it might, but see, the problem is, is North Korea always wants its acceptance only on its own terms. I mean, this, this goes back to the Sunshine Policy period uh, under Kim Dae-jung in South Korea, in which the idea was to kind of unconditionally accept and embrace North Korea. And over time, people became very disenchanted about that because North Korea seemed to just take advantage of it. Okay, so I guess last question for you, Professor, is um, do you see at all a possibility of a peaceful solution to this? Sure. I mean, there are a number of ways you could have a peaceful solution to this. Um, and there are a number of ways that North Korea would probably respond positively. What it's going to take, however, is something outside the box or something more imaginative than just continually referring things to the Security Council or adopting this kind of collective hardline stance that says, first, you do what we want, and only then do we listen. Hopefully in the future, that'll change. Though. Hopefully in the future, it'll change. You know, there's all sorts of possibilities on the, on the books. Exactly. Well, thank you so much for your time, Professor. My Thank's pleasure. Thanks for, thanks for having me on. North Korea's recent rocket launch reminded us all of the very real potential instability that can result from diplomatic failure and neglect. As the old cliche goes, only time can tell what can happen in that very volatile region and what we as the international community can do about it. Thank you so much for joining us here at In Focus. We'll hope to see you back here next week.